If like me, you're a detailing enthusiast or you're thinking about starting up your own business, I want to show you a product that I think you should definitely have in your arsenal, um, regardless if you're a full-time professional or a hobbyist like myself, and that is the Nex PTG Paint Depth Gauge Reader. If you want to learn a little bit more about this product, please stick around for the video and I'll attempt to show you everything that's good and possibly one or two bad things maybe as well, so stay tuned. So as you're watching this, we're coming up to Christmas time now, so I want to wish you and your families all a very happy Christmas and hope you enjoyed this video. It's possibly going to be a short one as I try to delve a little bit in depth into the next PTG gauge reader. I feel it's a really good product. I wouldn't get a huge amount of use out of it because I'm not a full-time detailer or anything like that, but what it does show me is the potential that this would have um, if I was to start up my own business and let's go through some of the, the bits and bobs about it now. Okay, so hopefully you've noticed already then, um, hoping the sound is a little bit better. I've been working hard on getting a new camera, um, which I'm recording on now, which would integrate new sound as well like that. So I'm hoping that it's all gonna be a little bit better. I'm still yet to actually record a video outside, but uh, from the test that I have done, it is actually working really good anyway. So, um, okay, so what comes in the box then? So you get this nice little carry case for the whole thing to come in. Um, as we open up the box then, it's very nicely presented in a foam case. So you have all the foam linings and everything. So it comes with your, your reader itself, or the gauge reader, the monitor, whatever you want to call that it is, the, the device itself. Um, set of instructions um, in numerous different languages, Polish, English, Ru uh, Russian, German, and is it Dutch? So that comes in it. You also get two batteries then for the device, um, two AA batteries, so any, any AA batteries would do. And also two um, modules or whatever you call them to calibrate your, your device whenever it needs to. So you have one that works with steel and one work with aluminium. Um, and we'll run through a little bit of how to calibrate there uh, throughout the video. So that's what you get in the kit. As I said, it's nicely presented. It's nice and easily stored away, so at least it's not going to get damaged or anything like that. And um, yeah, let's crack on into it. Okay, so the device itself is actually, um, there's no screen or anything like that on it. It's literally just a simple one button click. Um, it's made of plastic and obviously your two AA batteries go in there. There's a nice ergonomics to it as well if when, when you're placing it against the panels and stuff. The top section then as well, the actual sensor part itself is very good because it actually allows you to work on corners. So when you have a little ridge in your paintwork, um, you can actually use this to measure on the actual lip itself. So um, yeah, the build quality of this is obviously, look, it's a big plastic piece, but it actually works very well. So in order to use it then, um, you have to obviously load the app onto your phone, enable your location, your Bluetooth, click into the app, which you download then, there's certain specifics that it needs, generally works on most new phones, Android and, and uh, Apple devices and stuff. And then press the button here to switch it on. You should see a couple of lights flick on on the top. So the blue means obviously it's connected to Bluetooth, the red is your power button. And straight away then you can see that, I don't know if you can see it or not there, it says connected on the phone then itself. So this is your main screen then. I'm gonna actually record the screen so you can see what I'm doing then. So this, this is the screen itself, this is your main screen and like any other paint depth gauge reader, you're literally going to place it onto the, I'm actually gonna move the camera, hang on. So once we're all connected to the device, then you have your phone in one hand and you have the device in the other hand. You know it's connected with the Bluetooth because of the, the little blue light that's on it. As I said, I'm recording on the screen, so I'm gonna put it on the other side there so you can actually see what I'm doing as well. So all you literally do, place it onto the paint and you'll see your figures then as they come along. This will also tell you what uh, material you're using. So this is steel plus zinc on the roof. Paint layer is original. So this is a great thing as well because it actually will tell you whether the paintwork is original or if there's a second layer of paint, if there's putty involved. It obviously, it works in the traffic light system. So you have green for good, orange for, or yellow for sort of midland and red for um, a lot of stuff done to the work. So be it putty or be it fillers and, and paintwork and everything like that put on top of it then. So. Um, so it's very simple to use. You're literally just pushing it down onto the paintwork and you'll see your, 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 your readings then um, as it comes along. So how many microns are in the paint or in the lacquer then, so. In the actual menu itself, so I'm gonna go through the menu itself. So menu is up at the top left. You have reports, measurement history, measurement points, buyer's guide, gallery settings, settings synchronization, calibrate. Reports is basically, um, I have done a couple of testers and I'm gonna go through one of them now. So I'm gonna just delete these ones here now first. 
and this is where you're going to place all your reports and, and the ones that you've done, the ones you've calibrated from the actual device itself. Um, in measurement history, it'll give you all the last couple of measurements that you've taken on any cars. I think the, the ones that you've saved or the ones that you've recorded. Um, measurement points, again, you can set up the points. So uh, I actually came across this recently um, on a Citroen Picasso, a Grand, C, Grand C, Citroen C4 Grand Picasso and it has the panoramic roof. So you can imagine any car that has a panoramic roof. Naturally, this has a certain amount of points that are set up for you to, to take. Again, you'll see it. Okay, sorry, my battery stopped there um, on the camera. I forgot to charge that one, so I have a couple of bits left over anyway. So, okay, so we're in measurement points on your phone then. So what this does is it gives you a certain allocation of points on any type of car. So your saloon, your hatchbacks, your estates, whatever the case might be. Sometimes these points mightn't uh, relate to the car that you're actually working on. So for example, I was doing a Citroen C4 Grand Picasso there recently with a panoramic roof. Now on this, um, it's going to ask you to gather the points on the roof in a certain places on the roof as well for the report. But naturally enough, you can't get any placement on any glass points or anything like that. So what you're able to do in this is you're able to change around the measurement points um, in order to be able to accommodate the glass roof. So if there is a little strip of, of uh, paintwork or roof along the sides beside the say the, the rails or whatever like that you can move the points away from the glass and just measure out the points as per the card that you're actually working on so that's a really good little feature on this one so it's not just constricted to um the points that they've made up or the default points that they made up you can do your own points then as well so measurement points buyer's guide then um that's basically the other idea of having a paint depth gauge is that if you are going to buy a car, sometimes a lot of people say it's good to bring a paint depth gauge with you. Um, you might be going to a car sales place or buying a car privately or whatever the case might be, and they might say, oh yeah, look, sold as seen, it is as it is, and you want to go around, has it ever been crashed or uh, painted or anything like that? Oh, I don't know, didn't have the car, I'm not sure exactly what the story is, so bring one of these with you, and you'll be able to see uh, if you're not, if you don't have the eye for, I suppose, checking out these details normally, you know, where a car might be sprayed or whatever, bring one of them with you and you can actually see if there is any paint or fillers or anything like that. If it has been, if it has had a respray and possibly knock the price down a bit as well. So that's just a little bit of a guide how to help you along on that one. Um, gallery, I'm not, that's just basically if you take pictures and you can throw them onto the app and leave them on the app then. Settings, again, a number of different settings in there. You can work your way around those. Synchronization, not quite sure what that is. Now the calibrate button then. So in order to calibrate it then, you're just basically getting the, the two thing, hang on. So to calibrate the device itself, sometimes it may just, I suppose with weather or over time or whatever like that, it might just, the, the, the readings might be a little bit off or something like that. So it's kind of recommended to calibrate it every so often. So these are the two little things that you get. And in the calibrate mode, it says, I'll try and do it now. I oh, know I have to do it away from metal, so. In the calibrate mode, it says to calibrate, apply the thing to the blue plate of steel and then it goes to the aluminium plate and it has to read uh, 90 microns and once you've done that, basically your device is calibrated again, ready to go again. Now, so let's get on to the reports, I suppose, what the piece de resistance is for this machine and what this device can actually do and show you one of the ways which I feel would be hugely beneficial to those who wish to start out in a detailing business then. I must say as well, unfortunately, my car was, uh, I did clean it for the purpose of this test, but then I didn't get around to recording it, so it is a little bit dirty, so excuse any of that sort of stuff. Um, it's not really what the test is about, but I just want to show you exactly, you get an idea for a feel for exactly what this can do. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to basically create a report. So pretending this car has never been detailed, never been done before, which it actually hasn't, maybe bits and bobs of testing here and there and, and everywhere and whatever. So I'm going to show you as if somebody rocks up to your detailing business or you go to somebody's house or go to someone's place or you're thinking about buying the car or selling the car, whatever the case might be, you want to create a report. And this is how you're going to do it then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically go into reports and I want to create a new report. And hopefully you can see it. Hopefully it's coming up on the uh, on the screen, or I'm recording the screen anyway. So report name, I'm going to put in Skoda Octavia. A, what type of a car is it? A sedan, estate, hatchback, liftback. Uh, so my one is actually in this one is known as a liftback. Um, PDF, I don't know what that is. I have to check out that one anyway. And the set of measuring points that I'm going to use is the standard points that you get on the um, on the app itself. Now you, when you load in your different points. Basically, you, you save them as a name or whatever like this, and it'll come up as external measure 
<clears throat> and that's where you enter in your own points then, or that they're the points you want to use. So scroll Octavia, lift back professional, and we'll say look, so you know whose it is, ADDY. Save. Sure you want to save the report? Yes. So this is my report. Now I'm going to click into the pen icon there, or the pencil icon, and this is where I'm going to check it all out then. So um, we're going to go for external measurements, and straight away you can see the nodes on the app itself, and it's tell you exactly where you want to be measuring. And each one you go, I think you press save then. So let's go along and have a look and see. So number one is telling me over this side of the bonnet. Save. Yeah. And then two is down here. Let's press save. Three is in the middle. Four is down here again. Oh. And then five is up, uh, up out here. Now, we're going onto the roof, so it's over here. Now, so I'm going to keep going through these, um, through the whole car, and once you've seen it all done, or once it's all finished or all completed, I'll return back to you then. Now, so I have done the external of the car. There is other measurements that are on it here as well, which are the internal measurements, and that's inside the actual bonnet. Um, around the inside of the bonnet, around the, the inner, the sills and the, the door frames and all sorts of things, and in and the boot as well. And I'll just, I'll go through one of them here now. I'll just do the, I'm going to do the, uh, I'm not going to do the bonnet, I'm going to do one of the, the sides of the doors there. So we're going passenger side and we're going to try that way. So. Now, back out to this, okay. Okay, so for argument's sake, I've taken measurements of the whole car now, we haven't gone through it now in this. Next thing, we're gonna to go to photographs, and do you want to add a photograph into the collection as well to have it? So if I press, I'm obviously in photos here now, I press plus, I'm gonna take a photo. Now my car, my, photo, my camera isn't working very well in there, so I'll pretend, take one there, press okay. Take the whole lot of that one. Hit crop, so that's one photograph, and I'm gonna add another one in, just by, I don't know if you can see me or not anyway, look, just pretending. Do it that way, it works that way. So if you can imagine you're after going a view in the car, or you're, um, somebody's asking you for a quote on the car, or whatever like that, so you take all your photographs and you save them. Do it that way, press crop. There you have your photograph, so let's go back. Now, let's hit save. You sure you want to save the report? So we said yes. Now, this is the big part then, so. Now, this I feel is the absolute best part about this app, or what, what you can do with it anyway. Um, just, yeah, okay, let's just click into it anyway. So I click into Skoda Paddy, Skoda Octavia Paddy. Now, what in here you see, basically, I've put my own logo up there, and there's logos throughout the, <clears throat> the report as well. So whatever logo you have, you can put it on into it. Um, report name is the Skoda Octavia Paddy, that's my one. The read date is telling you today, um, any edits or anything like that that might happen. And unit measurement, uh, it's um, uh, microns, whatever, yeah. Now, vehicle data, oh okay, let's go back to this then. Let's go back into uh, edit, vehicle data. Now, make, I have Skoda, model, Octavia, uh, v or S. Engine capacity, it's a two litre, not a 20,000 litre. Power, don't know that. VIN, don't know that, well I'm not going to put that in or whatever. Fuel type is diesel. Year of production is 2008. And the colour is going to be black. So there's just a couple more little bits that you can put in. Now let's go back to our report again. So hit save, yes, into our report. Now, so first page that you're seeing then is your vehicle data then. So it's showing you it's a Skull Octavia. It's a lift back, otherwise known as a sort of a hatchback over here. Uh, it's a diesel 2008 black. And again, you can put in any comments you want as well. Just, you know, anything that you do see when you are working around it or whatever like that. Next thing you scroll on down and here's your measurements parts. So this is all can be printed out in a PDF format. Now it's probably easier to do, well, you would be doing it on a computer. So you'd email it to yourself or if you can print from your phone or whatever way it works anyway, it all comes out in a PDF format. Um, the cool thing is as well, you have your little logo up the top right, right hand side of the corner here. It's also showing you the points and the panels that you do need to be wary of and um, 
If we zoom in a bit then, so we're talking about the, where is it here? On the left side, front fender, it's telling you exactly what it's made of. So is it steel, is it steel and zinc, is it aluminium, is it whatever it is. Um, bear in mind you can't actually um, use these on plastic as well, so just to make note of that for some people anyway. So any of the bumpers and stuff, you can't take a reading on those. Um, so on the front left fender, um, it's saying the minimum is 73 microns, maximum is 85, so your median is 79 then from all the points that you've chosen. You can add or subtract points in there as well, depending on whatever sizes or, or whatever settings you want to choose with it. And then it's telling you on point one, so on point one, which is the nearest the front, um, we're looking at 81 microns, point two, 73, point three is 85, point four is 86. So therefore, giving you a median of 79. Actually, I don't know why it, it uh, said maximum. Maximum 85, yeah, it is in there. Sorry, I thought there was an 86 there. Um, so that works away for the whole, obviously left front door, left rear door, left pillar, left rear fender, etc., etc. Right side, it shows the exact same thing, and it also shows you, see the panels in red? They're the panels that you want to look out for. Um, for argument's sake, it's saying uh, right, rear, right rear fender. Uh, the median, median is 110, so it actually has one of the little red points on number two on the rear fender, which is showing as uh, point two is, it didn't actually give me a reading, so that's why it's probably showing up red. I need to go back on that one. I didn't actually, I was kind of rushing through it to see it anyway. Um, point five on the front right hand door then is uh, front door, uh, point five is 643, again, I'm gonna to have to go back and look at that and see exactly what that is. Obviously that could mean that there's some sort of uh, putty or anything like that in that. We'll go back and have a look at it now in a few minutes anyway, so. Um, more things on the report then is, still recording, yeah. Um, so on the top, on the roof, on the, the, the bonnet and on the boot lid, you have all your readings and then your measurements inside. Again, if you went off and did the inside the bonnet, inside the boot, inside the other side and stuff like that, you'd have more measurements here then. Um, and the charts then will, this will give you a look at, now the reds are really throwing them way out of proportion, so they're very hard to see, you know, get a, a clear graph all the way through. Um, but it'll basically give you a graph of sort of what the median is and where the green lines are at um, as regards depth on the car and give you an overall average, I suppose. Just an easier way of seeing things, showing the external measurements and the internal measurements. The other thing here now is tires as well. You can, um, if you're trying to do something for the customer, you can actually, if you have a tire depth reader, um, you could put in the depths of the tires as well. It's just a nice little add-on if you're doing a vehicle analysis on a car, uh, between paintwork and tire depths as well. It's just another thing that you can put in. Um, yeah, so that's what that is. Um, symmetric, I don't know where it stopped there, but I think it's at photographs anyway. I don't know why, I'm still getting used to this camera. So if you go back to your reports uh, in Paddy and you want to edit and you go to photographs, you can see the photograph there. So that's saying the front, uh, and bonnet, and the other one then is the near side Octavia, whatever. I'm just writing in anything here now. And hit done, hit back, hit save, you want to save it, and then let's go back into our report, scroll on down to the bottom, down to where the photos is, and you see the comments then are actually written on the photographs then as well, themselves. So. The good thing about this is then you can hit the share button then which is up the top and you can email it to whoever you want. You can send a copy to yourself or you can send immediate, you can send a copy to the customer themselves or whatever way you want to do it, but even to have it on file. So if for argument's sake, Paddy here comes back to me with, um, obviously me, whatever, uh, Paddy with his black Octavia, gets his analysis done, heads off, then comes back again, gets the work done on his car, heads off for year or two or whatever like that wants to come back in again and or even if if they sell the car and the new customer says uh, oh where'd you get that car done paddy did it i'll go back to him you always have that record of that car exactly what's happened on that car what you've done you can even put down the work that you carried out on it what compounds what uh, products did you use what machines did you use what settings did you use um all this sort of stuff so that's all clear on one report so you can possibly create one report for yourself to have on file, or you could use one to send to the client, showing them the depths of the paint and uh, with photographs included and attached and stuff as well. So I thought to myself at the start, having two devices in my hands was just going to be a bit, little bit finicky. I just thought I've seen and I have, I have had a cheaper sort of a Chinese brand, one, one that came from eBay or something like that. I have had one of those where the, the display comes up on the unit itself. 
and you're there going along yeah it's great it's showing it and all the rest um, but then I found it for some reason it wasn't calibrating and um, I just kind of put it all down to it being a cheaper device and whatever this is a bit more expensive I think it's possibly in around the 150 160 euros mark but the amount of information that you can get from just that one little device and it all goes onto your phone easily sent across to your computer or to a client or whatever the case might be but it's all it's just it's so simple to use even though it's two two machines or two devices but literally all you're doing is you're going around and it's collecting the data straight away on your phone i just think it's a great little device um overall as i said i was hesitant at the start having two devices or two things in your hands but uh once you get into the groove of it it's actually a really good system to use so anyway we're going to go back and have a look at that uh, rear quarter and see exactly where it was shown red or why it was shown red or what we can see from that then on the screen itself you can see that um, if we're looking at 0.5 here on the right on the right front door so it's in around this sort of area on the car um, 0.5 was saying uh, right front door 0.5 was giving us a read of 643 and it's in red as well so let's have a look back at that one and see what it says now so let's go back into measurements so this is just their standard measurements we we'll just put it up against the thing here. Now, paint layer is too thin. Original, too thin. Now, so I mightn't have, I mustn't have pressed it properly. I'm just having a look around the area to see exactly where it's reading or what it's reading. Now. I must have said anything. I must have just not had it pressed properly. Again, possibly a little bit slower, isn't it? Uh, was it slow and steady wins the race, isn't it? So, but you can go into your finer details then and see exactly what your uh, what's shown. So it's actually it was a mistake done on my part at the start. So, okay, so that was a mistake done on my part from the the front anyway. But um, again, if you go slow and steady with it, make sure you get your definite readings. Um, hopefully you've been able to see the exact potential that this uh, this one little device can do um, I think it's really good I think it's hugely beneficial for the likes of myself who want a decent paint depth gauge reader you know you're only getting into it but you do want to know exactly what sort of paintwork is is on your car or the car that you're working on um, you want to know that and, and suppose build that confidence that you're not going to damage any paintwork as a novice or as a starter you're not going to do any damage to somebody's car you may be working on be it family or friends or whatever but for the professional then as well, or the person who is starting out in business and wants to, I suppose, wants to look good when they're starting out in the business, get yourself one of those, do your paint readings on the car, get all the readings. If you show a customer that, or if you show someone, a potential client that, they're gonna be very impressed. They're gonna think that you're in it for years and you're gonna be, um, you're, just, you're bang on the money. You're showing them all the microns and all the damaged parts and where there's issues here, there, and whatever, you know. You'll be able to show them if there's putty and if there's fillers or if there's two layers of paint or whatever the case might be. All that information, um, it looks really, really good as well if you're able to come back to a customer and say that. Um, give them the added benefit of checking their tires as well. Just get yourself a, a, a tire depth reader check the depth of the tires it's just a nice little addition on for the for the person themselves so i hope you enjoyed that video and hope i gave you a little bit of an insight into the next ptg uh, professional this one is there's a number of other different types on the website um, i'll hit a link below anyway so you'll be able to see what other types there are but this one is the professional one and yeah i think i'm going to be like i i just really enjoy it i really like it as i said the negative was that you had two things at the start two things in your hand but once you actually see what the device can do you don't actually mind having the two uh, devices beat your phone and this in your hands so it's uh, no it's really good so if you like the video please give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe hit the likes and hit the shares and do all that sort of stuff really trying to build my youtube up so please if you could help me out hit that subscribe button down the bottom um, so you'll be notified of any future videos that i do and um, yeah thanks a lot we'll see you on the next one Bye bye.